Hello, this is an assessment of two upright pianos that have just come into stock. This is a Beckstein Model 8, made in 1905. And this is a Bluthner um, upright piano, about 130 centimetres tall, and made in 1925. And at the same time as assessing them, I thought it might be interesting to try and compare, compare them and see what sort of differences there are. So just focusing in on the Blutner first of all, hasn't had a huge amount of wear looking at the pedals. I won't bother to zoom down to them at the moment. It's not 85 keys, by the way, not 88 keys. So it goes up to top A and not top C. Now these are ivory keys. Um, there's a couple of small chips which we can repair, one here and another small chip here. And otherwise they're perfect, really. Now the Beckstein's got typical rosewood case uh, model, start model 8 that we're always trying to search for Model 8s, there's not enough of them around. Um, as I say, made in 1905, and rosewood such a beautiful patterned wood. Zeroing in on the keys here, these are also ivory and are perfect, but they do need buffing uh, a bit um, rough. That means if you if you play us a lot, it's going to attract the dirt. They must have been cleaned. Uh, we, we clean the keys, by the way, when it arrives in. That's something we always do with soap and water. There's one here that's come off and sat back on again and it's a bit of a ridge there, so that needs improving really. Has some book holders on, um, which is encouraging. And this is the swing style desk, which is slightly higher up than the other type of desk. And I find that's an ideal height. Now there is cosmetic um, interest on this piano because it's been kept open for so long. And I'm just gonna have a look behind here. I'll get rid of the music stand inside first. And the, music, the swing music stands fold inside like that. Now, if we close the lid over the keys, you can see the original colour of the piano. It's uh, quite different. So it's obviously been kept open pretty much all its playing life, I would think, to have gone so different. If you wanted that to fade back in, uh, it would take many, many years of being closed to get it to fade back in. So obviously, uh, well, the, the polish is good on the piano. So if you don't mind the fact that it's like that and then you could close it when you're not using it, you, that would improve it as the years go on. Uh, because otherwise it's pretty integral. You can also see where the music's been standing actually. That's also a darker patch. So it's been played a reasonable amount. There's the music stand line. Uh, inside you can see the underside of the lid. So that's the original color. But faded rosewood's very popular really. So um, if we did repolish it, then we would uh, make it a light, lighter rosewood than it was originally. So the Bruce is actually 1924 and mahogany is more typical of 1920s and Bluthner did lots of grand pianos at that time as well, uh, which they're famous for. Not so many uprights actually uh, of that, that age. Most Bluthner uprights are very, very old, over dampers. But this has got the, what we said before is what I regard as the world's best action ever made, best upright action. Sorry, we're looking at the case and I got carried away with the action there, but this is very, integral really. Uh, there is a little bit of um, need of improving it, but I wouldn't say it needs repolishing by any means. The top of the piano, um, there's a little bit that needs improving here, and I think we can probably make that good so you wouldn't worry about it at all. Now the Boothner has a touch weight of um, between, that's a 45 grams, uh, between 45, I say 44 grams and, and uh, 48 grams, so Slightly varied, but that's uh, acceptable var variation. Obviously, we can um, get it more accurate if you really, really want, but it's as good as a new panel will get normally. Here's a Yamaha 56 grams, and um, slightly, if you do want to really work your fingers, then obviously you want a heavier action. If you're an occasional player, then you want a lighter action as a general rule. And here's the Beckstein. 48 grams this is and that's more or less on 48 plus or minus two I, I, I worked it out at. Now tuning pins are tight on both pianos. This is something really important. Original um, tuning pins here and very tight. This is the Beckstein, sorry. And the Bluton has been restrung and repinned and they're also extremely tight. Now this isn't just the tone of them. This is uh, you, quite unique, the Be uh, Bluton pianos of 1920s. It's not, it's gained possibly slightly by being really strung, especially in the bass. And the 
damping is very good. The dampers, um, we'll look at the action adjustment and why I consider this to be the best upright action ever made in a minute. So the Beckstein tone, pretty typical of um, this age of Beckstein, just so beautiful piano, 1905. And, and there were a lot of Becksteins made at that time, but mostly Model 10s. And so it's great, it's very good to find a model. Nine, model 9s were common. We don't really buy Model 9s very much because the break point here tends to be not so good. And uh, well, we buy later Model 9s actually. But Model 8s, something we're really seeking for. A little bit mellow. Uh, it has been used a reasonable amount um, and needs refacing, and that will bring the brightness back out. But if you want a mellow piano, we can just even out the tone, voice it, and even it out if you want a very mellow piano. The Bulletin has had uh, new hammers on as well, so a bit brighter already. New hammers are bright and then you obviously voice them down to how you want them to be. But both have got beautiful tone. It's, both pianos we're really seeking for, searching for, sorry, all the time, these, these models. Neither have been tuned so far since they've been in. Oh, sorry, I beg your pardon, this one's been pitch raised. It was very, very below pitch, not been used for a long time. So now to the action. This is the Beckstein with a normal style of action, uh, if we, which pulls out and the dampers pull out with the hammers. So that's an, I have done another video of this to show the contrast between um, the, the, the Blutner and, and normal action. So this is what we might call a normal action with hammers and uh, dampers together. There's more detail of that on the other video, so I'll, t I'll link to. Now let's look at the reasonably long look at this blue. I've t already taken the, the, these bolts out because um, it holds in beautifully without them, as we said before. It just, it's just so well designed. So you can regulate the piano. You can press, even press the damper pedal and it won't the action won't move. Um, so that's the first thing if you're a technician. Um, take a look at this, and if you haven't seen it before on the other videos, then if we pull the action, the dampers stay on the string. There we are. So now you can regulate the spoons, the dampers, the damper springs, anything you want to really. Um, and you don't have to have special tools to get in at them. You can actually use your hand for this, although you might want to use tools because you're used to that. You can, uh, you can regulate these as well if they're a bit uh, tight or a bit not tight, sorry, if they're a bit strong or not strong enough, and you can regulate also the damper springs. So here's the Beckstein, and um, the other video shows a lot more about how you get into inside this action, but it, you need, it's much more awkward to work on a normal style action, and let's say 98%, 99% of piano actions today are exactly like this, or the Beckstein's slightly superior in some ways. It's got fly dampers in the bass too, and various other aspects. These are fly dampers that um, shut off the bass string. If the bass string's very resonant, then you need fly dampers, so to cut the bass string sound off. And they have a fly damper here as well to cut the high harmonics off. Again, back to the Bluton, I noticed that the third damper from the top here is, is early, so we'll just show you example of regulation, how simple it is. So the other ones are reasonably coming off at roughly the right time. Obviously we try and tidy them up too. There's a little bit of variety, but this this one particularly is very early, this one here. In other words, it comes off too early with the hammer, which makes it uh, not dampen as, perhaps as well, but also makes it feel heavier. Now if we pull the action forwards, we can regulate the damper like this I uh, beg your pardon, sorry, this is with the spoon, so I'll have to check which spoon it was again. So it's a spoon associated with this hammer here, so let's just make sure we get the right one. That spoon there, so we want it to come off slightly later, you can push the spoon. As I say, you could use a tool, but if you get used to the feel of it after doing many thousands of these on all pianos, then you can feel whether you're bending it slightly, and let's see if we got that right, push it back in. quite enough, let's do it again. There we are. I can push it with my, fit, with my thumb and uh, regulate it and then push it back in and see if it's lifting, there we are, it's rough, roughly the same time now as the one next, well, 
the, the other white, that's the other white key, so the one next to it is a sharp, and it's hard to lift them off together. So they, they all need regulating to come off slightly earlier, really. Now the dampers on the Beckstein are pulling off a little bit early, generally speaking. Should be when the hammer gets halfway to the string, so they're going to need regulation too, but we'll have to uh, pull, the, pull the action out and regulate the, the dampers spoons with the tool. Although it is possible to push the damper with your, your thumb as well, so um, if you get used to it, you can do that pretty accurately and then tidy it up later on. But they are all pulling off a bit on the early side. Of course, we have got other, many other pianos to compare them with in, so if you're interested in buying any of these, then um, there's plenty of stock to compare with. You could see on our stock list is always up to date, or hopefully always up to date, um, because as soon as pianos sold, they t they're taken off as soon as pianos arrive, they're added on. Um, some Yamahas here. So um, there are other videos of these pianos. I'm sorry I haven't got enough time to make individual videos of all pianos, but I hope the look at those uh, at the, at the contrast between those two has been useful. So this is an assessment of two upright pianos that have just come into stock. This is the Beckstein. Um, we're always trying to source this model of piano. As I, as I mentioned, there's a smaller Model 9, which we don't really um, try to stock. And this one, and there's a Model 10, which is very good. That's straight strong. But the Model 8 is uh, certainly one of our, our favorites. Not, not common enough, unfortunately. And they just have a beautiful tone, beautiful tone and singing. The knee's refacing at the moment, so, so the hammers are a bit weak, but obviously that's something we're going to do. And there's plenty of other bits of work. I've only focused on some of them and some of the differences between the two pianos. But I hope it's been useful for you to think about the pianos. If you are not able to get in and uh, want to buy or uh, try pianos out uh, before buying, then we're very happy to try and serve you and um, send a piano to you and see, uh, see how you get on. But obviously we want to, want to help you choose the right piano in the first place. It has a very even tone throughout and the action, we certainly need to lubricate the action by the way, it's something I didn't mention before. Something we usually do, it, it, it evens out the, the touch but also um, it, we'll find that the, um, the action plays more smoothly as well. So let's have a look at the Bluster to compare that with. So this is the Blutner upright. The tone on Blutner is quite distinctive really. I think if you're a tuner or technician you might like to comment on that. It's sort of, I, I'm going to call it plummy. It's beautiful. And if you're a tuner you always love Blutners because they're so wonderful, wonderful underlying tone. This is mahogany case, so obviously a plainer look than the than the rosewood case, but um, very acceptable. And we're just going to tidy it up a bit. This piano doesn't need a huge amount of work on the on the inside, just regulation really. Whereas the back time we're going to have to do more work on to just to improve it, clean it, and so on. This one's been restrung as well. Uh, which gives the bass a slight more power to it. By the way, the bass on this one, I measured when I was just before I made the video, and the bass notes here are the same length as a 165 centimeter grand piano. So, uh, because the strings on the grand start later, if you think about it, you've got the keyboard, then the strings start. Whereas on an upright, they go right from the top to the very bottom. So. On a, Although the upright might not be as tall as the grand is long, um, the string length is the same in the bass. We had to pitch raise this piano. Uh, it was very, very flat, which indicated it hadn't been used for a long time, usually. Now, I mentioned just a, bit, a, a minute ago, it's really important, this, I think, at the moment, that um, if you can't buy because you can't get in, then um, you could, you could, if you like video, uh, do a video call if you are able to do that and we can talk you through the piano. 
or we can make another video if you want to know different aspects of it. Or take photos for that matter. There are photos on our website anyway. But if you want to be really sure and can't get in, then obviously uh, we don't mind how long we take doing that. So I hope that's been helpful. Thank you very, very much for listening.